All right, it's Chip of the Day. People like Chip of the Day, especially my viewers in New Zealand. Uh, so a viewer in New Zealand sent me some parts and said, would you do a Chip of the Day? And the chip is an SIT9121. Um, I haven't seen these before. Um, they are basically an oscillator. So you're very familiar with uh, crystal oscillators, right? Those metal cans. Let me grab one. You know, these big, these big cans, right? And uh, you've used them before. Uh, so you can get them in these, uh, the main package, 14 pin, you can get them in these little eight pin things. There's only fin, four pins on them, but they fit in eight, eight pin package. So these are uh, uh, made with uh, quartz crystals. The quartz oscillates at particular frequencies and stuff. But um, the kind of crystals kind of stop working around 40, 60 megahertz, and they just don't like to go above that. You can run harmonics. You can get maybe crystals that will run harmonics higher than that and stuff. Um, but uh, there's a new technology out. Uh, which is what this company does. The company is SI Time. And uh, these are micro machined silicon. So, what is micro machining? Well, <clears throat> first you have to understand that well, the reason that quartz works is because it's a crystal. And if you think about silicon, when you grow silicon, it's a crystal. It's actually a single crystal, a big single crystal. And you slice it up, and it has to be a crystal because it needs certain properties and stuff. So once you have a crystalline material, then you can machine it, okay? Well, machining is hard to do in real small things, so you etch it away. So you start with a slab of, um, of pure silicon, and then you use chemicals to etch it away. And you can imagine that you kind of etch away everything, and you end up with these two little things that can vibrate like a tuning fork, right? And uh, you can build things like saw filters, and it's a whole bunch of micro machine things that you can do. Well, these use micro machine technology, and uh, we'll take a look at that. But uh, this particular part works between one megahertz and 220 megahertz, uh, accurate to six decimal places, and it's a uh, low voltage peckle. Is the uh, is the type so it's a differential low voltage signal in CMOS. I've talked about that before, um, and uh, yeah, so it's a 3.3 volt part. Um, so it's going to have a uh, output something like this. It'll have plus and minus. It'll be differential, and you can drive 50 ohm uh, transmission lines with it to go someplace and then you have a receiver device which takes that differential signal and and puts it back so uh, very similar to do it in different ways but it's all a differential signal okay so let's talk about that micro machining thing again uh, they have a nice white paper here um, talking about MEMS um, and let me show you some pictures. Um, it, it's going to have some type of thing that vibrates and then some type of amplification that it keeps it going. And then you can run that into some type of uh, fractional n divided by blah, 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 PLL type of thing to get some type of voltage, of, uh, voltage, some type of uh, frequency out here. All right. So, uh, yeah, so depending on what settings you have here on your divider and stuff, um, you can set it to different frequencies. And here's another way to say the same thing. You've got some type of oscillator, and then you can do a fraction and synthesizer. Um, d divisor and numerator divider uh, divisor and um, yeah you get a different frequency so um, phase noise um, but what I really want to get to yeah here we go so this is the actual mechanical structure remember I talked about etching away everything except maybe having like two little tuning fork types things well this is the tuning fork it's it's a very uh, complicated structure that vibrates in different modes. 
Uh, it can kind of wiggle around and uh, give you all sorts of strange vibrational modes. Okay. Um, let's see here. This one is a 48 megahertz resonator. That's the example. Um, here's a SEM photograph, scanning electron microscope. And so here is the single crystalline material. And then you can actually etch on the inside and you can have these structures on the inside. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's real, real space age stuff, right? <laughs> um, and then they're going to be, uh, you know, a section that vibrates and a section that has the amplification and the divisor and all that other sort of stuff. They can have all sorts of, uh, all sorts of fancy things in these chips. Okay. So what does that mean for us? All right. So he sent these to me. Actually, he ordered them from the company. You can get samples from the company. He had them send them directly to me, save him on the postage. Um, now, these parts supposedly are programmable, okay? Not these parts, but in general, their parts are programmable. And you can request from the company pre-programmed parts. And so these are pre-programmed parts. A one megahertz, 1.18. 1.18 megahertz, 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz, 100 megahertz, and 200 megahertz, okay? All the same chip, basically. They've just been programmed differently. All right. So let's talk about programming. All right. So you can buy, it's expensive. But you can buy a programmer from this company and then you can program your own. It supports a whole bunch of different families and stuff, you know, Windows based, and you can go zap, zap, zap. Um, you, do, you do need to have a part that has a certain part number. So like for the ones that we're working on, these S, SIT9121, you have to have a serial number that has a dash F P000. FP000 means it's field programmable. Okay. These have already been programmed and these are field programmable. Now I, I read this cursor, cursorly, cursor, I don't think I read it quickly <laughs> and um, I can't figure out if you can only program them once or they are reprogrammable. Um, I didn't really hear the words reprogrammable, so they might be a program program once type of part, but I'm not quite sure. If anybody knows, comment below. But we have some parts to play with, one of each, and uh, they are tiny little, actually they're not tiny little parts. I have other parts in, in work. I'm, I'm designing another board and I do have some tiny parts. While these are small parts, I wouldn't call them tiny. Let's get one out. He seems to be Stuck in the bag. Come on, you can do it. It's being shy. Oh, there he goes. Ah, there we go. All right. So, um, yeah, this one is not too small. He's, uh, I think, five millimeters by seven millimeters, and it is a uh, six pin device. So, we will have to create, uh, I think, a PC board to play with these things. Um, I think they're going to be difficult to do right like this. And I have access to free PC boards, so why not? So we're going to do that. We're going to let a little PC board, um, and bring out the, uh, bring out the differential lines and put in the resistors to load it correctly and, uh, get these things to oscillate, give them, give them a try, see how they do. So, uh, yeah, so that'll be part two is getting a board made. Um, but yeah, chip of the day is a SIT9121.